Hey everyone, Nisha Manon here, Director of Nikasu Foods and Founder of Jack and Chill. So in my previous video, I showed you how to find the right product for your business. So today we are going to talk to you about a more important topic which many of you have asked me to make a video on. So this would be how to find the buyers for your products or how to find the buyers for your business. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different ways that has worked for me while running the business in the last uh, 12 years. Make sure you stay till the end because I've got two secret little tips that I'm going to share with you which I haven't told anybody else which I have used in my business to find the buyers. So the first and foremost is uh, our biggest search engine which is Google. What you can do is you can use these different search terms like um, distributors, wholesalers, stockists or buyers and then you will get a range of uh, different customers who will be buying your products. So that's the first and foremost method. Let's say you are planning to sell Indian food products because obviously food is my expertise and um, so what you do is you go on to Google and you type distributors of Indian food products UK. You have to mention the country as well only then it will bring the better search results for your country. So this will bring these search results and then you can see these list of companies who are dealing with these products. Then what you do you go to each and every of these customers or each and every of these websites and have a research of each and every customer because you have to find out do they deal with these existing products or uh, do they all already have these Indian snacks or Indian food products that you're going to supply them. What are the competing products that they have in their range? If they don't have, is there a scope that I can supply them with these products? How is their credibility in the market? How long have they been in the market? When were they established? How many customers do they have? Or what are the geographical location of these customers? What are the type of customers? What are the other type of products they have? Do they supply B2B? Do they supply B2C? Do they supply shops? Do they supply by restaurants so these are the things that you need to see when you are going to their website and if you see that it is suitable for your distribution or your supply then you go to their contact page find out who the contact details are or if you even go to the about us page what you can do is you can find out who is in charge of buying these products mostly you know if you're brave enough get onto the phone first rather than sending an email as well so that is the most important place where I found my buyers or the customers or the distributors from the next is you can uh, go to the local shops or uh, whichever your target customer is. It can be your local shop or restaurants or uh, cash and carries or wherever you are planning to sell. Go to those places and see what are the type of products they stock. Is there a scope that I can supply my products there? What you do is you see what are the other competitors products and then um, you can pretend as if you are buying that product as well. Just try and build a relationship with that uh, shopkeeper first. Be their customer first then be their supplier supplier you know rather than just being a supplier or a cold seller over there first so pretend as if you are buying the competitors uh, samosa let's say or competitors uh, snacks you go to the till and then when you are uh, selling these products and if the shop doesn't have too many customers then you can have a conversation with these uh, shopkeepers you ask them who supplies these products do they have their own van or do they have their own driver these um, brands you know and uh, you can ask do they uh, supply through a distributor do you get these products delivered through a wholesaler if so who is the wholesale what is their contact details so they might even have those invoicing details and they might get you those contact details as well so that's one way how you can find the uh, distributors or the wholesalers from the shopkeepers now I promise that I'll give you two secret tips which I have used for my business. So secret tip number one, what I do is I go to these shops and if it's a bigger shop like a cash and carry or a bigger Asian shop then well and good because you'll have a wide range of these competitors products. What you do is you take the packaging from these uh, competitors products or the brands or the products that is similar to yours. You go to the back of the packaging and you'll see the address details. It can be who has manufactured these products so it can be manufactured by so and so if you don't have the manufacturing details it can be manufactured for Nikasu Foods UK like if I take my brand as an example I've got my factory based in India so what we do is we would say manufactured in India and then imported by or distributed by Nikasu Foods UK because you can just say uh, you know it's manufactured in India and then I give my address so what you could do is it's manufactured by somebody 
and it is imported by such and such company. So you will get the importer's details here uh, or you will also find uh, distributed by such and such company. So that is your target customer. So there you go. You found another potential lead. Go ahead, get their contact details or go to Google again, find what their email address is or the phone number is. Go on the call and get them, contact them. The next is uh, you go to the local chamber of commerce or uh, UKTI or DIT events that is happening in your local area or it can be in the UK as well or in London or wherever you are based, uh, you know. So because HMRC, DIT, uh, UKTI, they all conduct several business uh, seminars and several business events which will be useful for you, not just for networking, but it can be useful for building potential leads as well. You never know, it can be through the networking events that you meet other importers or other business customers in uh, you know these events the next one is uh, social media obviously to um, get your potential customers it won't be buyers but it can be a direct to customer selling so D to C selling where you can build up your customer base in your initial days by selling through your Facebook page or your Facebook groups now even we have got several whatsapp groups as well and you can also have it uh, selling through Instagram if you've got your Instagram page you can use all all the social media platforms you can even use LinkedIn to find uh, buyers or uh, you know the wholesalers as well so those are the social media platforms which you can use to find these customers the next important one is uh, going for the exhibitions or uh, trade fairs which again uh, trade fairs putting up a stall in a trade fair is very expensive especially in the initial days when you are a small brand or a startup brand you don't have the budget to put thousands and thousands of pounds uh, in a stall all you know what you could do is you could find some other brand or find some other company who is going to put up a stall there and you can share a stall with them so you can speak to the exhibitor and then you can see if that is an option that you can do again that might not be affordable to you sometimes so what um, you could also do is there is uh, there are these international trade fairs that happen example is if I say IFE that is international food and drink exhibition that happens in London and there are similar exhibitions that happen in Singapore USA Australia so there are all these international trade fairs where the government would put up a stall because they would want to represent each country in these uh, exhibitions. So suppose your supplier is based in India and he wants him to be represented in the UK because obviously it is growing his business because they want to grow their company, their customer base in the UK. So you are based in the UK. So what we did was because my factory was based in India, and if they are registered with a government body called APIDA, that is a government body in India which supports the export of agricultural products. So if they are a member of APIDA and we are making food products, then they put up these stalls in these international uh, exhibitions around the world. And in UK when it comes, I am the one who is representing the stall. So that is free of course because you are being a part of a government stall amongst this international trade fair. So that is one option which you can do you can speak to your supplier and be a representative of theirs in the UK. There are several places where you can find out uh, what are the exhibitions happening in the country or in your area as well. You can go to exhibitions.co.uk or you can go to wholesaler.co.uk. There are a couple of websites. What I'll do is I leave all these links in the description below for you to have a look at and browse around later on after this video. Now I know I promised two secret tips. So here is my secret tip number two when you are going for these exhibitions. What I used to do in my initial days was I used to go there as a visitor to these exhibitions because obviously I can't afford putting up these you know 2000-3000 pound uh, exhibition stalls there and then you never know if you're going to get these customers as well. So you know it's the visitors that are your target customer. So you go there as a visitor and because the visitor tickets are mostly free of charge these exhibitions are all mostly free of charge and it's over two to three days as well. So you've got two to three days of time where you can spend time in these exhibitions you know and uh, you buy these tickets go there as a visitor go to these stalls and see who are the customers going to these stalls so that customer is your target customer and whom you want to speak to so once they have visited these stalls you slowly walk around with them and then try and build up a conversation or you know try and just bring up uh, just say hello and then just say yeah I saw that you're interested in these products make sure you have your visiting card or your leaflet or whatever your marketing material 
materials ready in hand or your bag so that you can immediately give it to them because these people they don't have time to spend too much as well they might be coming for a one day exhibition amongst these three days and make sure you follow up with them after the exhibition that is very very important because most of them if they don't follow up then the conversation goes there you have to hit the iron when it's hot so you have to make sure you contact them or you follow up immediately after the exhibition is over or maximum in one or two days otherwise they might even forget you because they would have loads of emails or loads of phone calls as coming after the exhibition so that's my secret tip number two go as a visitor to the exhibition and contact these visitors hope you like these uh, tips and methods which i explained to you now so do let me know in the comments below what are the methods that you are going to use for your business or the ones which you are your favorite also if you liked my videos make sure you share it with everyone whom you feel will benefit and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos or the future topics i upload thanks very much for all the support you've been giving me all this while and all the likes and all the sharing so see you in the next video until then goodbye